Good evening, I'm Deepak Faltak back again to offer some concluding remarks for this exciting workshop. I just got some statistics from my colleagues here. Out of uh, 237 or colleges, about uh, 12 were not able to connect on all the four days. They missed out on some days. And uh, today about 10 colleges are not able to connect. It is sad. However, I must say that it is acceptable because a total of 250 colleges is what we had targeted with approximately 18,000 students registered. You'll be glad to know that this is so far the single largest experiment of addressing and engaging so many thousands of students across the country on something which is not part of the regular university syllabus. In fact, you are interested on these four days of weekends and continued interaction even on the last day makes me very happy. It tells me that there is still for urge, uh, there is still an urge for creativity across our young students in the country. As I told you, the tablet computers are expected to proliferate very, very quickly and very, very largely across the human society. And over the next decade, they will probably become the basic tool for education in most of the educational institutions in advanced countries and hopefully even in developing economies such as ours. To begin with, I would like to remind you where you people are positioned. You are all engineering college students. I suppose uh, most of them are third year students. Uh, any idea about the demography of these students? Mostly third year students. Is there anybody from the workshop team here? Most of them are third year students. Well, I would say senior undergraduates and some postgraduate students, maybe others. There is an interesting statistics which most of you would know, but I would like to remind you. The number of Indians who are less than 19 years of age, less than or equal to 19 years of age, is very, very large. Can you guess how much? There are 300 million Indians in that age group, 30 crore Indians. That means there are 30 crore Indians who are at your age or younger than you in this country trying to find out the best avenues and opportunities for educating themselves and using that education, trying to figure out how to do well in life for themselves and for the nation. This is not a small number, by the way. This is larger than the total population of most countries. In fact, there are only two countries, three countries, which have a population larger than 300 million. That is China, uh, India herself, and probably United States. The point is that this is termed as a demographic advantage for us. But this demographic advantage will be a true advantage only if this vast pool of talent can be given proper education and then opportunities for not just earning livelihood, but for making themselves and the society and the nation stronger and more prosperous. Why I mention this to you? Because you would realize that you are the leading edge of this so-called demographic dividend. Leading edge. And a leading edge of any phenomena has a greater responsibility and also greater opportunity. What I mean is, not only you people who are attending this workshop have to do well, you have to help the remaining people out of 300 million in some way or the other to become better, to become better educated, to become better qualified. Obviously, as of now, your concentration would be to completing your course, learning useful things such as Android programming and many other things, and pick up a good job, do well in life. But while you do so, in every activity of yours, please try to see if you could also help others. In fact, the contest, the programming contest or the application development contest that I have planned and which I announced yesterday is precisely to 
provide an opportunity for all of you to help others. How? As I mentioned, all the applications that you develop will be released in open source, which means all the applications will be available, accessible, and usable by all the millions of students and even others who are even older than you. That's an opportunity. And that is why I would like to see a very, very large percentage of the people who are attending this workshop participating in this contest. Whether you win an award, a prize or not is immaterial, but a participation will do two things. One, it will give you and your team members an opportunity to really come up with something creative, something different. Writing good programs, writing programs which work, which do something, which provide some functionality. Whether it's a game, whether it's a simulation, whatever it is, it just does not matter as long as it is created using your own talent. Please remember that whatever you submit will be released in open source with your name attributed to you. And those of you who come up with something excellent, something extraordinary would be remembered by the history and by the other people. As I said, all of you desire to do well in life and I wish you all well in that endeavor. But I would like to use this opportunity to share with you a few things that I believe people at your age should remember. When I say people at your age, I do not exclude myself because I still feel I am young enough, although I am not obviously in age, but by mind and by heart, I am as young as you. I can relate to you well because as a teacher, I deal with people like you every day. I have been doing so for the last 42 years. I hope to do so for some more time here. When I try to peep into the minds of youngsters such as you, what do I find? I find dreams and aspirations exactly similar to those which I had when I was your age and I was a student in second year, third year, fourth year of engineering. I realized something then which you should have realized now. Namely, that engineering education and science education are two fields which are enormously important not only for you but for the entire society. Why? Because in this century, and in fact starting with the previous century, most of the wealth generating mechanisms, most of the mechanisms which provide comfort and solace to humanity in their normal life come out of science and engineering. And that is why this education is so very critical, so very important. While we are pursuing this education and while you will pursue your professional careers later, I believe that there are a few things that you should like to keep in mind such that your professional career and in fact even your remaining stay as a student is far more fulfilling, far more pleasant and far more enriched. I am not going to talk about academics of course, I am not going to talk about preparing well for exams, that is what you all do automatically and naturally, but I am going to speak about certain other characteristics which are very critical in your future life for leading a successful professional career. First and foremost, you need to imbibe in yourselves a set of values which could be traditional values, could be good values that you yourself believe in, could be good values that your parents or neighbors or other people in the society believe in. What are these good values? And I am not talking about a specific religion or a specific dogma or specificism. I am just saying these values appear to be good because they are universally acclaimed as good. First and foremost, the truth. We should stick by the truth. Second, we should stick by claiming whatever is ours and disclaiming whatever is not ours. Let me elaborate a bit. When I sit in an exam, and I have a neighbor who is very smart and writing correct answers, known to be writing correct answers. I may be tempted, if nobody is looking, I may be tempted to look into my neighbor's notebook and maybe copy something. Well, if nobody catches me, I may get a few marks. 
if nobody catches me and if my neighbor actually has written wrong answers, I will get less marks. But this temptation is to be avoided because it immediately impinges on following a good value, namely truth. Remember, when you are getting evaluated, you are being evaluated for what you know, not what others know. And therefore, it is only proper that you articulate, you describe what you know. It is possible that some questions cannot be answered by you, either because you are not prepared or because you are not able to get those solutions during the examination time. It is okay to give even a blank answer. It is okay to imagine something and write whatever you think is right, but the answer must be your own. The very temptation of copying from somebody else means something very hazardous. It means that I am trying to claim credit for something which I claim to know myself, but I do not. And that is bad value. That is bad value now, that is bad value later in life. In academic terms, this is called plagiarism. This is in fact the first stage. Plagiarism means taking somebody else's stuff and claiming it to be your own. Sadly, we find that people when they grow up with this kind of temptations, not controlled during the young age, become sort of used to doing this kind of thing. They think there is nothing wrong in it and then they do worse things in life. Somebody in Coimbatore has done some fantastic research and published a paper in 1985. I am working in the same area in some other city like Jarsugula or whatever. Now, I have not been able to get the same accomplishment, but I, I want the same kind of recognition. I am tempted to read that paper, copy some paragraphs from that paper and claim those paragraphs to be my own work and submit them. This is theft. Ordinarily, if I go and steal a television or something from somebody's house, it will be called a criminal offense. But if I simply take a paragraph from somebody else's write-up and include it and claim it to be my own, I believe it is not really as bad. I would like to tell you it is not as bad. It is worse. It is worse because it is less likely to be caught and therefore you are less likely to be ever reminded of what should be the right thing to do in life. This temptation, I, I must say, you must prevent yourself. Nobody else can help you. So, when you give any examination, when you give any evaluation, A, you must articulate what you know yourself. In research, for example, it is perfectly permitted to quote somebody else's work to define the context and say, this is what I have read, but this is what I have done subsequently upon my own thinking and so on. Such a reference has to be cited. That means, when I quote that paragraph, I am required to do two things. One, I must rewrite that paragraph in my own words. It is not proper, it is not correct to simply copy cut and paste, the cut and paste technology which is so, uh, so prevalent these days, particularly because of the availability of electronic contents, I may be tempted to do that. That is wrong, that is academically considered a criminal offense. Why do I elaborate this one point so much? That is because when you embark on developing your application, you have to be very careful. You may pick up any lines of code or any idea from any source that you come across. After all, there are thousands upon thousands of applications which are already, which have been developed in Android and many of them are available in open source. It is perfectly fine to take an idea from somewhere else. It is perfectly fine to re refer to that code, but you must give due credit to that code. You must begin your submission by saying, I got this idea from such and such place. This is the reference which is cited at the bottom. This is the code which they have written, but I have applied my mind. I have worked hard to extend that concept further, to add some functionality there. And this, this and this is my own work. All the rest is somebody else's work. I think you should have courage to say that. And it does not matter if for 200 pages of somebody else's work, I can add only one page of my work. Believe me, when that one page is your work, it will get you credit and you will be respected for your honesty far more than what otherwise you would be ridiculed for copying somebody else's work. In any case, since we are going to release all the contents 
uh, of your submissions including your application source code the binaries the functionality documentation everything in open source please remember that it is important to avoid this temptation of copying from somebody else because the whole world will be looking at each and every application when we publish it on the iit website with your names with your institute's name there it is very very important that you therefore submit your own work do your own work and submit your own work why does this temptation come in the first place is because of the natural human tendency to optimize you know you would have heard this word optimization optimization of any process means you try to minimize the efforts that are put in and you try to maximize the gains that the system gets in terms of our normal activity for example when i am a student i would like to minimize my studies and maximize my marks because i correlate my marks to the gains this if you are smart enough you can do that by n number of strategic means but you cannot include any kind of plagiarism while doing so so the first good value is to claim what is yours and to disclaim specifically what is not yours by citing the reference to the appropriate place from where you have picked up the knowledge there are a couple of additional things that i would like to mention one is our ability to articulate particularly articulate in written form right in writing is very poor i am not blaming you for that this is a problem that the entire indian society is afflicted with and this is not new there is a reason for this our age old traditions of knowledge transfer have mostly been verbal the script started getting used by common people very very late since our traditions have been verbal you will notice that indians as a whole write much less than what their counterpart human beings in other countries and other civilizations do we don't write our diaries very few people write every day their diary what they have done what they have not done etc our own history is written by others right from yuan sang to whatever whosoever outsiders have come visited india and documented our history but we don't write we speak a lot we exchange our knowledge and ideas by speaking we read a little and we rarely write i would like to request you to consider spending a lot of attention in your ability to articulate in written form because in this century and beyond the written articulation will become of paramount importance i have come across many students including several of those who come and uh, come and join our mtech program here even our mtech students many times are not able to write properly in english while articulating their ideas and they all claim sir this is because our native language is not english now that is the most bunkum argument i have ever heard like most of you my native language is also not english i studied in hindi all throughout i did an experiment which i would like to share with you for almost 6 years while i was conducting an entrance examination for the mtech students thousands would apply of course we would do a first filtering and then we would shortlist people about 50 or 60 to be interviewed while they are waiting for interview i would conduct a long test and in that test there would be one question write about yourself and your family in 10 sentences they would of course answer it truthfully making mistakes in writing english the next question would say rewrite the answer to the previous question in your own mother tongue 99% of the time when people wrote erroneous english they also wrote erroneous marathi hindi telugu or whatever what it means is people have generally not disciplined themselves disciplined their mind to write properly i see emails bouncing across including those which are exchanged between the participants of uh, this workshop including the responses given by my team okay if they were to be part of a proper answer in any examination all of you including my team members will fail miserably because there are grammatical mistakes there are spelling mistakes and 
the sentences somehow do not make proper English language sense. Do you know why it still works? It works because my students, my staff members and you all can actually understand what is being stated and therefore you say it is all right. And that is because you make similar mistakes, you, you are used to similar language. This getting used to is a very dangerous thing. Please remember, you will be competing with the rest of the world and the rest of the world believes in proper written articulation. You have to learn proper written articulation either now or later and better learn it fast. I would submit that the documentation that you are going to prepare for participation in this contest should be written as far as possible in correct English because English is the language that we have chosen as a medium of instructions across all engineering education. And there is no harm in writing out that documentation and taking it across to your own friends and others saying, will you please check whether there are any grammatical mistakes? Will you please check if there is something wrong? After all, don't forget that there are tools available today which can automatically check for spelling mistakes. Do you necessarily subject any email sentences that you write to spell check before sending it? I believe you don't because otherwise I would not get mistaken English in small emails from all across the country. So this is the second point I wanted to share with you. Please become as perfect as possible in English articulation. English indeed is a foreign language but is used extensively in India and there is no reason why you cannot master any language including English. You have to discipline your mind to write properly. By the same token, I would suggest that if you ever write in your own mother tongue, be it Marathi, Hindi, Telugu, Tamil, Bengali, whatever, please ensure that you at least try and write correct Hindi, Marathi, Telugu, Tamil and do not make mistakes there. Whenever you write badly in any language, you are insulting that language, you are insulting all the readers and above all, you are insulting yourself. You are not putting out the proud fact that you are a human being capable of learning, capable of industry and work and capable of correcting your mistakes. Your written articulation says a lot about you. Please make sure that it says well about you to anybody who reads whatever you have written. There are many things that I can speak about but today is a short time. I think uh, my time is already up. No, I have five minutes because I started five minutes late. Okay. So I will use not all the five minutes. I will use only three minutes to uh, conclude my talk. I somehow dream that the lives of all my students and you are all my students now. It does not matter where you are sitting because once I engage with you as a teacher, you become my students. For my students, I have a special message. I would love their lives to be as beautiful as dew drops in the morning that you sometimes see on a winter morning. I do not know whether uh, uh, the word dew, is it commonly known? Dew, dew drops are those small beautiful looking water drops, early morning you will find them on the leaves and flower petals in the winter particularly. They look beautiful when the sun shines on them. And I imagine how nice it would be if all my students had a beautiful life as beautiful as these dew drops. So I defined a special meaning for the three letters of the word dew. Dew is spelt in English as D, E and W. For me, D stands for dreaming big. You must dream big because your dreams will restrict or permit you to achieve less or more. So dream big so that you can at least aim to achieve more. Do not worry if you cannot fulfill all your dreams. But when you struggle to achieve bigger dreams, you achieve much more than if you initially dream small. Even if you achieve it, there is not much fun. So dream big, that is D for you. The E in due, in my opinion, should stand for enjoy life. Why life should be enjoyed? Because life is the only interval that you are consciously aware of. We are born, we will be dead someday. The interval is life 
and every instance in that life comes only once. So please remember, every instance in our lives is extremely precious, including this instance. Currently, you're spending time listening to me. If I had not prepared very thoroughly, then sometimes I would waste your time by not speaking meaningfully. I must enjoy every instance of speaking. I must enjoy every instance of listening. I must enjoy every instance of writing a program. I must enjoy every instance of trying to find out the error in my program. I must enjoy arguing with friends. I must enjoy seeing movie. I must enjoy dreaming. I must enjoy everything. Enjoy life. Enjoy every instance of life because every instance is precious. It will never come back again in your life. So dream big for D. Enjoy life. Enjoy every instance in life for E. And the last is W. W is for working hard. You have to work hard. This is a question I often ask my students. How many hours in a day do you sleep? The typical answer is six hours, seven hours, eight hours. Well, I don't grudge you. I would love to sleep for six, seven, eight hours. But for last 45 years, I have been sleeping on an average only three hours. And that is because I realized very early in life that the more I sleep, the more of the instances in my life are wasted because there is no productive work that is being done. Please remember when I say dream big, I don't mean dream in your sleep. Dream while you are awake. That is what is big dreaming, not the kind of dream that you get. I am not suggesting that all of you should become mad like me and start sleeping only for three hours a day. That is nonsense. Every human being requires a proper amount of sleep. But you can reduce that average quantity of sleep that you spend every day by working maybe 15 minutes extra, 30 minutes extra. And more importantly, every minute that you are awake, you can utilize that time by doing a great amount of planning and by optimizing the time utilized. But if you work hard, then and only then, you can create something which others who work less hard cannot do. Namely, you can create history. History is not created by working 9 to 5 or by attending classes or by just doing defined things. History is created because you dream, you take up challenges, and you face those challenges, and you work more than others do. So dream big, enjoy life, and work hard to create history. It is my wish that your lives would be as beautiful as dewdrops. I'll conclude by saying thank you very much for participating in this workshop. I do not have exactly the number of students who have participated. I take this opportunity to thank my own team. I believe my experiment of exposing my own uh, project staff MTech students and RAs to work as teachers has succeeded well. I was looking at some of the question answers that were happening. Please don't stop at the question answer interaction that has happened here. The Moodle login will be kept on, I believe, for a long time. And you should be able to continue to post your questions and receive your answers. In fact, what has happened today, what has concluded today is the creation of a strong body of students, thousands of them. I believe 18,000 or something. Let these 18,000 students represent the first largest collaborative group in this country, which will together work in coming months and years. And it will not end just with the submission of your uh, test assignment, but it will continue further, prompting you to contribute continuously to the increase in knowledge. You might have been given some Akash tablets. These tablets were meant only for the duration of the workshop. You will all be returning these tablets to the Akash coordinators of the remote centers. Sadly, we have yet to receive more tablets. We expect the delivery of tablets to start happening in a short while. When that happens, we will be sending more tablets to our Akash project centers and they will be given as per the directions given to the Akash project coordinators. Some of you who will continue to do their final year projects next year will probably be issued some tablets. Some of you will be attending a course, a subject which is taught by a teacher as chosen by your institution will be using the Akash tablets for you know, listening to video recorded lectures in that subject, giving daily quizzes in that subject, etc., etc. Others will have to wait till the government of India comes up 
with the larger procurement of Akash tablets to be distributed at subsidized rates. These Akash tablets belong to IIT Bombay's project and they will only be issued for the project purposes. Thank you very much once again and I hand over to or nobody. Is that the end? Uh, I am told that everybody wants to know more about the coding competition. Well, as I had announced yesterday, uh, is Pratik here? Oh, yeah, he's, uh, but his, his two colleagues were to be here, Nitin or somebody? No. Okay. Uh, what I discussed with my team is that to begin with, uh, from uh, today onwards, they will, uh, today or maybe tomorrow, they will, uh, they will open that site where the participants have to enter the names of their team members. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to decide which two or three of you will form a team. All members of the team must ensure that their names are entered and the names have to be their Moodle identities. So we'll be, we'll be validating that site, we'll be validating against the Moodle entries and we will simply collect the team entries. At this juncture, you don't have to define what problem you are solving or what program you are going to develop. Spend five days a week to think about what you want to do. But once you define that, you work on that and the submission details will be put on the same website and you will all be getting an email once you register for the contest. The important detail about the contest is that those submissions which are made from remote centers where there are a number of teams which are participating, certainly more than uh, maybe 10 teams at least, would be given the first, second and third awards as I had announced as an incentive. It is a cash award which your institution will hold a small function and, and give you after these are submitted and evaluated. For those remote centers where there are very few teams, we will probably find out an independent way of clubbing them together and judging them. But the important point is that all these award winning entries will be put very, all the entries first of all will be released in open source and the award winning entries will be proudly listed by the Akash project in a prominent manner on our website including the names of the participants who have prepared those programs and the names of their institutions as the great contributors to this project. I think that much of details is sufficient. So please start forming your teams. I think you would have already done that. I think tomorrow you would get an opportunity to register your team. You will have to register formally. All the students who are certified as having attended these workshops by your Akash coordinators will get a formal certificate of participation from the institute in due course of time. Thank you very much for your interest and continue enjoying programming for Android tablets, programming for Akash. All the best. God bless you.